Hello, everybody. Hi. Uh, sorry about all the technical uh, issues. Uh, I mean, you don't know about technical issues. I know about the technical issues. But yeah, that's why I'm a bit late. Sorry. Um, but yeah, hi. We are here today um, with um, with Lori from Samai. Um, and we're doing a 12 hour uh stream different all the different things that we do we've just merged them all into one stream um and we are um uh, raising money uh today for uh samai and um uh, end youth homelessness and uh yeah uh i'm not gonna talk about it laurie's gonna talk about it <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah if you guys have any questions or anything um uh, ask away in chat, but we should be covering everything um, in the next half an hour. So yeah, um, cool. So first of all, uh, Laurie, tell me who you are and who who are Samai. And what do you um, do? So Samai are a youth and women's homelessness charity. So that means we support young people aged 16 to 25 and vulnerable women who are either experiencing homelessness or at risk of experiencing homelessness. Um, we do this by trying to prevent homelessness. Uh, we offer safe accommodation to those who do become homeless. And then we also offer support to move on from homelessness. Um, and the reason we choose these two groups is because they often have slightly different like requirements for support than maybe the rest of the population. Um, slightly more specific kind of uh, homelessness is quite a difficult cycle to break out of. So in the case of young people, we know that if we can prevent them facing it all together, or at least if they have to face it once, if we can try and make that the only time, um, then they have a much better chance of actually building like a better future for themselves. Um, and in the case of vulnerable women, they have often been victims of domestic abuse, which is actually the leading cause of homelessness for women in the UK. Um, so obviously they require quite gender specific support because they might have faced traumatic experiences. Um, and also in that line of our work, we sometimes need to support the children of these women as well. Okay. Um, so with regards to young people, uh, what does that look like? What does homelessness look like for for young people specifically? Um, so it can look a lot of different ways. Like it's we're not necessarily a street homelessness charity. Um, you don't have to be sleeping on the streets to access help from us. It might be sort of sofa surfing and things like that. And that, that's when we try and kind of, well, we try and prevent even sofa surfing, um, we'll try and sort of identify young people who are at risk of becoming homeless. And we do this in a number of ways. One example is um, our upstream Cymru project. So that's like a survey undertaken in schools and it basically identifies who is high risk of becoming homeless by factors such as um, disengaging with education or they might be having troubles at home with a parent or carer. So hopefully we can step in then and prevent homelessness by, um, we do family mediation. So a support worker will go in and try and improve the relationship between a parent and carer and the young person so that it doesn't like escalate to a point where they feel that they can't stay at home anymore. Um, yeah. And then we also have another programme called Emphasis, which uh, focuses more on the education side of things. So a support worker will try and make sure a young person stays in and engages with education. Um, it's obviously it's not always possible to prevent homelessness. Sometimes it does happen. Um, so then it's then it's important that we offer safe accommodation and then support to move on as well. Yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah. So safe accommodation is. Uh, important part of helping people are facing homelessness um how how do you provide uh, safe accommodation yeah i think safe accommodation is probably one of the more kind of obvious ones if people think of homelessness charity that's what they think of giving people sort of somewhere to sleep but we try and make it a bit more than that for my so for our young people we will limit our houses to no more than nine young people okay. in the semi house and the reason we do that is because we want it to be more like a home, not just a place to sleep. Um, so, you know, they're given their own bedroom, their own space, they can call their own. And um, our support workers will then support them to try and live as independently as possible within that house. Yeah. So it's really, you know, it's a home, not just somewhere where they've got a bed, basically. We try and make it a real home. 
Um, and then in the case of our domestic refugees, as I mentioned before, they'll be like gender specific, uh, just to make sure the women can feel safe. Um, obviously, they would have faced traumatic experiences um, and they might have their children with them as well. So they need that safe space where we can support them to move on from homelessness as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so how do you m- uh, help them move on from homelessness then once they're in this accommodation? And- it's- I think support to move on is a really important step. It's not always one that's necessarily thought of immediately, um, but it's one of those things like we can give someone safe accommodation for a while, but if we're not going to equip them with the skills to live independently, then they might end up in that cycle and they might end up homeless again. Um, So there's sort of some of the more obvious things like helping them to achieve qualifications so they could get a job, enter the world of work. You know, obviously that's a big step towards independence. But there's other things that as equally as important, like just life skills, um, cooking, how to be a good tenant, even things like going on a weekly shop, which is something I think a lot of us, we, we know how to do it. Yeah. We, we just kind of take for granted that we just know how to do it because we went with our parents and we saw what they did. But often some of our young people won't have had that experience, um, so they won't know how to do it. So, you know, they need yeah. help with things like that. Um, engagement trips are also really important, and that can be things like, um a day out at the beach or a trip to the museum because it's a new experience so it, it builds confidence for our young people and it improves mental well-being because a lot of them will have um faced adverse experiences as well so it's really important to address that and try and give their their mental well-being an uplift as well yeah oh nice um and is it just a, a charity based in wales it is so we are Welsh charity we work across Wales um most of our support is in the south um that's where most of the population is um and we work in pretty much most of the counties in South Wales so you know Cardiff, Swansea, RCT, Neath Port Talbot um I won't list all of them but um we do have some work in North Wales as well um and one of these things is our Tea Pride House and that's basically um one of our young person's houses, but it's specifically for LGBT young people, because I think it's quite a shocking statistic, but they're four times more likely to become homeless than their peers. Um, So it's really important for us to offer a safe space just for people within the LGBT community so they can get the support they need to move on from homelessness. And I think that's something that we would like to expand a bit to not just have in North Wales, but, you know, have those facilities in South Wales as well if we can. Mm. Oh, amazing. Um, so, yeah, how long has Slamai been running? How how long have you been a uh, So we've been running since 1986 um, and we've supported over 94,000 people now um, with homelessness or homelessness related issues. Um, around 10,000 people we supported just in the last year. Wow. Um, obviously, unfortunately, with the rise of cost of living, I, you know the the need for our support might only increase um so that's why we're, we're really grateful to people like you guys who are helping us out today you know just raising a bit of awareness telling people a bit about the work we do and obviously a huge thank you if anyone is able to donate some money today um so that we can continue offering this support because yeah it's needed now and it might only be needed more unfortunately yeah um yeah i think we do have we do have a donation we have a little bar uh that will oh, show amazing. the donation so thank you so much for for those who have like donated so far and everyone who's who's watching yeah um, absolutely so far. thank you for anyone because yeah. every little helps with it you know anything yeah. anyone is able to give is just great um yeah with what you, you said earlier um i was on your youtube actually earlier and i saw um a video that um michael sheen had done um about um the support during lockdown as well i know that um a lot of charities struggled during lockdown um but yeah i saw a video on that i thought that was that was quite cool yeah he has offered us quite a lot of support michael sheen to be fair there's there's a lot as like an ambassador for us yeah yeah um so um i have a couple other questions that um i know some people want me to ask um Mm -hmm yeah um so with specifically 
specifically with uh, gaming for good how how is that um helping Shamai? uh so gaming for good is actually an event run by end youth homelessness uk so they're a uk wide charity and then homeless charity homelessness charities will get involved um so we get involved with it every year and it's just to be honest it's a good opportunity for us i talked about raising awareness obviously raising money is a big part of it as well um but it's a good opportunity for us to raise awareness in maybe a bit of a younger sort of group of people and a lot of our events are more geared to kind of middle-aged range um so it's good to be able to open that door and kind of talk to people who maybe wouldn't necessarily come across the mine um or wouldn't have an opportunity to get involved in one of our other events or maybe maybe wouldn't want to get involved with one of our other events but gaming is like you know obviously the thing that you do um so it's (laughs) it's great to kind of be able to do it with an audience that we might not usually be able to um and i think it's it's got quite a nice synergy kind of gaming and formlessness in that they're both things that are maybe sometimes not very well understood by a lot of people um, or maybe people have a certain preconception of it that's not true and you know they learn more about it and it's yeah. like oh okay we understand it more then um, I think that's why it's kind of works as a good partnership but definitely being able to raise awareness in in groups that we may not usually be able to um, yeah. is a really good opportunity for us. Um, I'm really glad as well that we can we can do this because we're not you know video gamers um, as such and um uh, it also brings awareness that you know Dungeons and Dragons yeah. is, is a game that um, that that you can play that you can play with hardly any money at all. You know you don't have to have all this like yeah absolutely exactly. It's not you know people do hear gaming and think of video games, but we invite people to get involved in this in whatever way they want. Basically, play whatever game you want and, and yeah. just raise awareness and, and raise some money as well if you can. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Um, so I mentioned um, Michael Sheen and um, uh, uh, the lockdown and stuff earlier, mm-hmm. uh, pandemic. Um, what is has that been the biggest hurdle in the last few years, or is there anything else that's been the biggest I hurdle? Probably have to go for the pandemic because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously that was a very difficult one, and for you know for our support workers who work face to face with young people and stuff that was made very difficult and at times, you know, impossible. Um, And from a fundraising perspective as well, we weren't able to go out and talk to people. So raising awareness was really, really hard because everything had to be online. Um, So it probably, yeah, probably would have to be the pandemic. Uh, We have recently lost some EU funding as well. So that's also been quite a big obstacle because it's kind of like a chunk of money that we had to spend on our support services that now we're like, we gotta find that from somewhere else because you know our income might drop but the need for support doesn't so if there's any money lost from the pandemic or from um eu funding we've, we've got to make up for it basically we've got to find it somewhere else so yeah yeah probably the pandemic number one but <laughs> there's quite a few yeah <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah um and um what has been the most uh rewarding thing um since you've been a part of Shamai? Um, that's another hard one to answer, actually. I think <laughs> after my, it's not far off a year now, and um, I've learned a lot in that time. Um, obviously, there's the kind of obvious, obviously rewarding things like um, the stories or our, our success stories, basically, about the young people that we've supported, you know, achieving qualifications, um, yeah. getting their first job, renting their first flat, things like that. But there's also the side of it that I like... Um, you know, to get out in the community or meet people like yourself who I wouldn't necessarily meet otherwise. Yeah. Um, knowing how many people are just want to help and want to offer support is really like, restores your faith a little bit. It's quite heartwarming to see the amount of people who will get behind us and be like, oh yeah, we really want to support you in any yeah. way we can. And um, that is a, a really rewarding side of it as well. Yeah, and hopefully you'll be doing some Dungeons and Dragons soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've seen my friends have been trying to get me involved with it for a while, so I think I probably should now. <laughs> I'll be an expert after I've watched your streams, and then exactly, I'll just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've all had a uh, we've had a uh, question from chat as well, um, uh, and Laura, you'll try and answer it. <laughs> 
Um, I'll do so my best. Yeah. Um, are you able to give an example breakdown of what um, the money gets uh, spent on, so the the amount of money, like um, what certain services, accommodation, etc. Yeah, so um, just a couple of examples off the top of my head. Um, I know it costs, I think it's £98 a night to house someone um, in one of our family houses. Um, and we, we do a few different statistics. We've got things like um, it's £30 for a counselling session. Um, just as some examples, I might have to have a quick look to get more examples. Yes, I <laughs> can't remember them off the top of my head. Um, bear with me. Right. She find it. I know we've got some on our website. Um, yeah, yeah, so we've also got some examples like £16 could buy learning materials for a young person to achieve some qualifications. Obviously, I mentioned that in the support to move on stuff. Yeah. Um, we've also got £50 could pay for a mum to attend you and me mum sessions. Um, so that supports victims of domestic abuse to develop relationships with their children and teach them strategies basically on how to keep their family safe. And the only other example is the one I, I already gave, which was <laughs> the £98 to um, house someone for yeah. one night. It's quite a lot, actually. Yeah. yeah, it's, you know, it's it's not cheap. And like I said, with the rise of cost of living, that's actually increased mm. quite a lot this year. Um, I know when I started, and like I said, I've only been here for about a year, that was £91. So you know, that's cre- increased of about £7 per person. Obviously, that's an average statistic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's quite an increase when you think about the amount of people, you know, if we're supporting hundreds of people in houses and that goes up seven pound per head in the space of a year then it it really adds up okay yeah um so we have a few minutes left um where can uh, people get information about um Samai and how can they get involved in helping out and things i have put a, um, a link to the Samai. uh Website oh, fab, yeah. That's the yeah. thing. There's, there's loads on our website. Um, if people want to get involved with fundraising stuff, there's we've got a whole host of like events on there. Um, we've also got our fundraising at samai.org.uk email address online, so people can email if they wanted to do something completely different. You know, we've got events like Gaming for Good or 10K runs and things on there. But if people want to get involved, then we're happy for them to do whatever they want to raise awareness or raise a bit of money. Um, if people are looking for actual support from Salai, um, then usually we'd recommend going to local councils first. Whether you're homeless or you think you might be at risk of becoming homeless, they should be able to help. We do also have a youth homelessness helpline that's run in partnership with Shelter Cymru. Uh, the number for that will also be on our website. Yeah. Um, and then there's you know, trained professionals there who can offer support, advice, maybe help to uh, get temporary accommodation if, if it's needed but like I said earlier you know you don't have to be sleeping on the street to access help if, if people haven't got a place they can call home if people are staying with friends then they can access help and they should you know yeah amazing thank you um is there anything else um that we'd like I to think say that's all from me yeah. um I think we've only got a couple of minutes left on our yeah, video, so yeah. <laughs> good time for the YouTube videos. Oh, it's quite yeah. quite good timing, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If anyone has any questions um, uh, throughout the day, I could always um, message. Yeah. Ask. Yeah. If anyone has any, send them over, and I'll try and provide the answer as quick as. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Um, so yeah, we have a quick video that uh, I'm gonna show you, um, and then. Um, We'll move on to our next stream. Uh, the first gaming stream of the day um, will be uh, Phil is playing Cult of the Lambs with with Twitch integration. Um, so uh, yeah, you can be a part of the cult, um, and he may or may not sacrifice you with that. <laughs> but yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, yeah thank you. you so much yeah. again for getting involved today. It's uh, it's really appreciated. And like I said, any money we can raise for anyone who is able to donate, massive thank you in advance. Um, yeah. And yeah, if you can just raise some awareness as well, that's great. That yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, thank you again yeah. for people who are donating right now. Um, Saracos is saying that um, uh, the second donation coming through now that I know how much is actually needed. Oh, awesome. So yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank guys. you very much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, right, we're going to play this video and then we'll see you guys in a bit. Yeah. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> Hi.
Homelessness is defined as the state of having no home. But at Tlamai, we know it is so much more than that. It's a young man struggling with acceptance, moving sofa to sofa, trying to find a new home. It's a woman trying to escape a partner that's made her home an unsafe place to live. It's a 15-year-old boy who, through no fault of his own, has had to sleep on the streets. Homelessness doesn't happen because individuals make bad choices. People who are pushed into homelessness have already been let down by a system that's supposed to protect them. That's where Thlamai come in. Thlamai prevent people becoming homeless, provide a safe home when they unfortunately do, and support them to move on to a brighter, independent future. We couldn't do this without amazing people like you. Every challenge, every event, every step that you take on for Thlamai is one step closer to helping young people and women facing homelessness in Wales. What affects one of us affects all of us. Together, we can end homelessness.